Hello, friends. It's me, Bill Allen, and uh, we're going to be just enjoying some crafting. Now, for those who are new to my content or if you're just tuning in on Twitch live for the first time, let me break it down for you. I am not a professional artist. I'm just a gamer who couldn't afford to buy Dwarven Forge every time I needed something cool for my tabletop. So I got into crafting and I found DM Scotty. And then through DM Scotty, I came to the community of terrain crafters and I started picking up techniques. And it's been a long journey, friends. I started doing this back in about 2015 and um, it's, it's gotten to a point where now I am comfortable crafting. And I wanna share that with you because the bottom line is, is you don't have to be a creative person. You don't have to be an artistic person to do some crafting and make some cool things for your gaming table, for your gaming group. Or you know what? Sometimes people don't even have a group to game with. And that's all right, man. Because just doing the craft is, is uh, fulfilling. It's a fulfilling experience. So welcome. And uh, I'm going to get right into it. Hey, all right. All right, all right, all right. Hey. Thank you, Kemet. Thank you. Um, so let me show you what we have here. So this is pink insulation foam. You could buy it in sheets, big four by eight sheets, uh, two inch thick, inch and a half thick, inch inch, uh, one inch thick, a uh, half inch. And uh, it's not super expensive, but it's very durable. It's not like that cheap white styrofoam. This is, this is a much uh, stronger pink foam. You know, it'd be funny right now is if I just snapped this in half on accident. Um, so we had a whole project with this stuff and I cut up a whole bunch of pieces and um, I made one series of tutorials that I put out this week for rocky mountainous terrain that you could use for making rocky scatter terrain and outcroppings and uh, finished it to look like this. And this, this came out real nice, it has a real nice top texture and side textures. And uh, I'm going to use this in a variety of different ways. I got a real big piece here too. So I got some options for how to lay this out on my table. And you know, I'll reference Dungeons and Dragons uh, as using this, but really you could use this in any game system. You could be in a sci-fi system where you're exploring this world with all this rocky terrain. You could be in a post-apocalyptic game setting. You could be in a Western setting. Who knows? The sky's the limit. So. Uh, maybe a gothic horror campaign where there's like a ritual sacrifice happening up on this, this hilltop. So that's the rocky mountainous terrain that you could use for crags and cliffs and that kind of stuff. But uh, I wanted to do one that was more arctic. And I've never done this. Full disclosure, I have never done arctic uh, terrain. So this is going to be new. So what I did was I took some of this pink foam and I did three different base coats. So this is the one that I did in blue. Okay, and if you're trying to follow along what kind of supplies you need, this is Apple Barrel Pool Blue. And it's uh, cheap, 50 cents a bottle from Walmart. Um, and I did this pink foam in this blue. I based it in blue. Now, it doesn't look like uh, icy terrain yet, okay, but it could. The other one I did, this middle one, I did in a gray, and that's a granite gray. It's a light granite gray. And that's, uh, that's also Apple Barrel, 50 cents. The last one I did in a white. I went just straight white for the base coat because I'm thinking Arctic terrain and Arctic, rocky, icy kind of mountain stuff. And that is snow white, also an apple barrel color. So I've got three different base coats. Now, none of these in and of themselves are complete, okay? The base coat is just the first layer of paint that you put down. And since I've never done this before, we're doing this live together. This is all experiment in real time. Um, I'm going to take these three and now I'm going to go to the second step, okay? And the second step is going to be adding another layer of color. So what I did was I took my brush and I just took some of the white and I kind of slapped it and stippled it on this blue. And if you look at that, I don't know if you could see that real good on the camera, but if you look at that, um, you could see kind of the white top there has a nice uh, kind of texture, but there's still a lot of blue poking through. So I don't know if this blue piece is going to go the distance in blue. I think it might get a cover up. Now the gray one, I did that white across the top and that turned out dope. It's almost like a highlight. So I really like that and I think I want to continue that white across this gray and see how that finishes out. The last one I, I went with was white all along. So I think I might just do a white overcoat of this 
just to give it a little more texture. And then I'll compare these and see how they all go. Now one option for fixing this blue one would be just do some gray over it. And I'm going to try that first. I'm going to try doing gray over this first. Because you can't go wrong with the gray because it's, if you don't like it, you can always go over it. So I have my gray. I have a plate here that I'm going to use for uh, my paint. Just, I don't need a lot here. Um, my brush, I want to make sure my brush is wet, but not soaking wet. So I got some paper towels over here and I'm going to wet the brush, but then kind of blot it out. Get, I'm going to load this up here with some gray. Okay. And what I'm going to do is take this blue piece and I'm going to paint with the grain. So I'm going to go up and down. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of hit it like that. And I'm trying to hit it and leave some degree of the blue coming through. Not a ton, but just some. Okay. So I'm going to, I don't know which camera to go to. Can I go to this one? Is that good? This one. This one? Okay. So I'm going to flip hands and go lefty. Now I'm a righty, so this will be interesting. So what I'm doing is just hitting some gray across there. You see that? So there's still some blue peeking through, but I want to hit that gray. Now look at that. And you know what, friends, I want to remind you that you can't go wrong. This is crafting and it's terrain. You can't fail because even if you fail, so to speak, you can just cover it up, put another layer of paint on there. So, you know, this was a fail. Three minutes ago, this blue was a fail. And now I'm seeing this gray cover up over it and it's kind of cool. It's giving me some texture, some striations right there, like almost like ice layers amidst the rock. So I'm going to keep going around with that. I'm going to hit this gray all over the place. Just see where it takes me. See where the adventure takes you. Now, I hope you all are having a good Friday, or uh, maybe if you're in another part of the world, it's already Saturday, or it's not Friday yet. Who knows? Time is a fluid thing. But I want to welcome you to watching. And um, if you're watching this on a rebroadcast on YouTube, then that's cool, too. You know, whenever you're watching it, doesn't matter. Time is fluid, so um, you might be just settling into a cup of decaf coffee, or you might be at work uh, looking busy, so your boss thinks you're busy while you're really watching crafting videos, and all those options are good, man. Now I'm going to take what's left of this here gray on this plate, and I'm just going to kind of drag it across the top. So I'm not completely covering up the blue. I'm just kind of obfuscating it. I like that word, obfuscate. Just covering it up a little bit. I'm going to let that dry, okay? Now, this is my original gray piece, and as you can see, this gray dries very light. So I'm going to have to go over that with a white dry brush, but I'm not there yet. This piece is the one that I just did straight white, and what I like about it is that it's base coated in white. What I don't like is that it doesn't have enough gray. So I'm actually going to add some of this gray in by just crossing, just like I did on this other blue piece. I'm just going to kind of cross up and down and fill in some more variety on this here. I need a little more gray, so I'm going to go ahead and dip into that cheap gray paint. Some people have mentioned, uh, Bill, why don't you wear gloves while you're painting? And I'll tell you, um, I like to feel the paint. That way I know it's real. I know it's part of reality. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I know paint is real. Uh, I just don't have any gloves. Hey, so Kevin, uh, I'm already happy to play D&D once. I have two friends who want to play, yes, made characters and know the basic rules a bit, but we don't have uh, the XP to let someone DM. Um, you know what, my friend? At some point, you got to DM. At some point, you got to give it a whirl, give it a try. And just like crafting and painting, you might mess up. You might. But you know what? If the people that you're playing with are also newbies, they're not going to really know whether you messed up. And, and the point is, don't spend too much time worrying about messing up. What you want to focus on is having fun. Role-playing games are all about human interaction. This harkens back to the time of cavemen. Our, our great ancestors, you know, they, you, you find a warm spot to gather around with people and you tell stories, oral tradition, you know, and that's, I think that's a big part of, you know, what, what we, we have in our modern world in a lot of cultures and societies. We just don't give ourselves enough time to be human, you know, and just chill. I mean, just really just chill. Now, I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing anymore. I took this nice white piece and now I'm just overcoating in, in gray. Is it perfect? Nope. Sure isn't. That's okay. Very few things are perfect in nature, and that's what makes nature beautiful. So we're just going to keep on going here. All right. So I'm going to put some of this gray on here, and I'm going to show you my little slapping technique. So I'm just going to kind of slap this and stipple it on, 
the top here on this white piece and just pop it around there, just different spots there. And that's good. That's good. That's beautiful. I'm going to let that dry up. I'm going to let that dry up real nice. Um, and one other thing, too, I'll mention this. This, this gray, I can, I can experiment with this while it's still wet. I'm going to put a little dab of that blue, not too much, because this is a very vibrant, light sky blue. And I'm going to mix it in with what's left of the gray, which isn't very much. And then you know what I'm going to do also? I'm going to get some water on my brush, and I'm going to mix in some water. I'm going to water it down and mix that in. Can you see that? Can you see that? So this is now kind of a bluish gray. It's a little more muted, which I think is more natural. And I'm going to go over this one that I just did, okay? I'm just going to do little gentle swipes. Oh, I like that. Just intermittent, gentle little swipes. Guys, that's, that's all I'm going here for. I have no plan. Just, just trying it out. Just trying it out. Just trying it out. Yeah. You can't mess up. If I don't like it, I'll just paint over it. So getting some blue in there has added another kind of dimension. I like it. I like it. I'm going to paint the bottom here while I'm at it. Give it a nice overcoat of that blue gray that I just made up off the top of my head. And then uh, I'm going to switch fingers up here, and I'm going to drag out some of the blue, not all of it, just around the tops. It's just for some, some different, some variation in the color, okay? I like that, you know? I like it. Now it's got some gray, some blue, some white. And then, you know, I could always, if I don't like this, this is Arctic terrain. I could always go over it and just, you know, put more white up on there. So um, I'm going to use these other pieces of unpainted foam as little drying racks. That's what I'm going to do. Some people did recommend, I do read the comments, and some of you all recommended that I use um, toothpicks. And that's a great idea. And I think in, in future episodes, I might set up the crafting space to have some toothpicks so that these pieces can stand up on their own and dry a little bit easier. But I'm going to leave them over there right now. Um, now, before I go back to this guy, this is already gray, and I, I experimented with some white on it, and I think it looked good. But I want, I want to add in a touch of blue here. So while I have this blue-gray on, on this mix, okay, I'm going to water it down even more, and I'm just going to drizzle some of that in there. What I'm trying to do is get in some of these crevasses. And these, uh, okay, so I'm just really, I'm just, this is almost like a wash. Like I'm just letting the, the paint kind of flow. And it's, it's a very watered down bluish gray now. But I'm just getting in, not every single little crack, I'm just getting in where I can. And my, my vision for this, I'm not a scientist, but my vision is that perhaps there was water flow at some point and it dried up. So there's some of that semblance of, of that blue color maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that's how it works scientifically, but I like my idea. So I'm just going to go with it. And again, if I don't like it in the end, no big deal, man. I'll just cover it up with some white. Okay, so just a few dabs across the top just for some variation. Yep, mm-hmm, good. Let that dry up as well. Let that dry a little bit as well. There we go. So while those are drying, what I'm going to do, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep the stream going, is um, I'll talk to you guys about, um, about questions that you might have but I'll also address some of my thoughts about crafting too. And I have these other pink foam pieces, so I could base coat those while we're talking. Uh, Kemet, well, at first I didn't want to DM, but now I'm studying a bit to DM for the first game because we want to play that much. You know what, man? Let me give you a tip that I've often given. If you're a newbie DM, start off small. You don't have to invent a whole world, okay? Come up with a location, a little town or a village, and Think of some terrain that might be around that. Maybe there's a, a woods, like a forest area uh, with a creek. Maybe there's a pond or a lake to the south. Maybe there's some mountains to the north uh, with some mines or crags or chasms or something that can be explored. Maybe to the west is a swampland or whatever. And then you come up with little things that could stem from those terrains. You know, maybe in the forest there's an old um, watchtower an old ruined watchtower with ivy and moss growing all over it. And rumor has it that a wizard uh, once occupied that watchtower, but his power became too great and it attracted evil. And now there are monsters who dwell there. You know, something, something like that. Um, or pick out something easy. You know, maybe there's a, a, a bunch of brigands and bandits 
who have started raiding the the um, travelers along the main road towards in and out of the village. You know, so there there are some options there that you could explore, and um, the the point is is just don't over plan. You know, come up with a couple story adventures, and kind of be flexible. Be ready to be flexible and let your players kind of dictate what they want to do and where they want to go. And they, in a lot of ways, a good group of players will will make the DM's job easier, you know? And if you don't know how to get it started, I always start with some, some hooks. And a hook could be a person, like an NPC, um, you know, maybe somebody who comes into the inn and, you know, tells someone that someone was kidnapped and I need your help. Now, if they're not heroic people, then maybe you just have them, you know, one easy way to go is just have them be attacked, you know, have the characters be attacked. And maybe they survive the attack, but now their interest is piqued because they want to know why they were attacked and who's attacking them and where did the attackers come from, you know. So there are a lot of good ways to start off your D&D &D game um, or any role playing game for that matter. But start small, you know, don't over plan just one adventure because you might have a uh, plans and you know spent weeks of time making this elaborate dungeon and then the characters decide not to go there now what you know so I like to just create a world an environment with some options and then I let the players choose where they want to go that's how I roll all right so while those are drying I got these two little pieces that I think would make nice little scatter terrain and right now I'm thinking of going with the gray base coat. So I'm going to base these in gray. And a, a base coat is a thick coat. So I'm, I'm going full blast with the gray. I want total coverage. I want to make sure it seeps into all the cracks and all that stuff. Okay, so I'm going all out here with the gray. Very solid paint coat. The base coat is um, typically the, the heaviest layer that I put on. Yeah. It's typically the heaviest layer that I put on because I want to make sure that all the pink foam's covered. I want to make sure that all the cracks have like a deep coat of, of paint in them because later on when I do the lighter layers of coat uh, of, of paint, I'm going to get real nice highlights and, and dry brushing action going on. So um, I mentioned before and many times on various videos, that uh, I got into crafting for the terrain for the tabletop because I couldn't afford Dwarven Forge. Doesn't mean I don't like Dwarven Forge, their stuff's awesome. And if you have the money, and you know, some people have the money, but not the time. So maybe they don't have the time to do crafting, but they have the money to buy it. Well, check out Dwarven Forge, because they're pretty amazing. They're, they're the cream of the crop, the gold standard, if you will, for terrain. All right, that guy's done. You can see that, just went, I, I went even on the bottoms. So I'm just gonna lay him down there on the sea. Now this guy is cool too, I kind of carved this out. And that texture comes from the hot wire foam cutter. So um, I bought one from a hot wire foam factory. It was a $30 tool, put it together. You watch a YouTube video for how to use it. It's not rocket science. And it, it is miraculous what it can do. Do you need to have that though? No. You can cut pink foam with, uh, you know, any kind of regular knife um, or tool that is sharp, saw, whatever. Uh, obviously, be careful anytime you're doing anything with tools. Um, be careful. Use your tools safely and wisely. Don't want anybody to get hurt. Um, but, you know, you can, you can texturize in any number of ways. Uh, you could use crinkled up aluminum foil. That's one of the most common techniques. You crinkle up some aluminum foil in a ball and you kind of roll it and smash it into the pink foam. Another thing, if you want really big um, chunks and divots in your rock, you can actually take like real rocks or even a chunk of broken concrete and just jam it in there, you know, and just roll it around, rub it around, bang it onto the, the pink foam. You almost can't go wrong. It creates real cool natural um, textures as well. So, all right, that little guy's done. I'm saving these big pieces for last, and there's a reason why, guys. I want to make sure that the painting scheme that I like the most, that I have a, a recipe for it. It's, it's almost like cooking, you know? I'm experimenting now in the kitchen. I'm just throwing ingredients in with no particular order. So before I get into the mix and go full scale, I want to make sure that I've got the right recipe here. So. Let's take a look at some of the stuff. This is still drying, but this was the one that was originally based in blue, and I went over it with gray. 
and I still see a lot of blue under there. And I'm thinking that maybe blue would have been a better um, highlight coat, you know, just a little touch. So I'm gonna keep going with the gray. I'm gonna cover up even more of it. And it's okay if some blue peeks out. You know why? Because I'm making this. And if I get to use it at the table and my players get to have an adventure where in, they're in some northern climate with, you know, rocky, uh, snowy, icy, scatter terrain, they're not gonna care if something's slightly bluer than something else was, you know what I mean? And if they do, then, you know, they don't deserve to have your company. That's my feeling on the matter. Um, so I'm just gonna overbrush here and blend a little bit. And, you know, it looks like what's gonna happen is I'm gonna come back to all these pieces with a final dry coat, um, dry brush coat of the white. And that'll really bring out a lot of the details too. So um, I typically work, you know, with these other Rocky Mountainous pieces. I work from dark to light. So I do a dark base coat and then I work towards lighter colors as I'm going. But this, um, this Arctic terrain is a little bit different, you know, cause it's, it's, the end goal is to be really light and bright colored. So I might have to do multiple white coats over this. You know, we'll, we'll see. This one, I think I want a little too blue. So again, it's all right. I'm just gonna overbrush it a little bit. And by overbrush, I mean, I just have some gray on here and I'm just literally brushing over. It's like a magic eraser. And I'm just brushing over, just brushing over. I'm brushing over the blue. Now it's blended a little more, blended it, blending it, blending it. And it's almost become like a, a blue gray base coat. So I dig it, I dig it. It's gonna come together just fine, man. When I first started crafting, I used to worry about stuff. I'd get worked up like when things wouldn't work out. You know, I'd try one of DM Scotty's tutorials and my thing would look like stupid, you know, and I was like, oh, I suck, you know, I hate this and I'd get mad. And at some point after failing a bunch of times, I just realized like it's not, it doesn't have to look perfect. It's all about the experience, it's the journey because the end piece will come together as long as you're kind of having fun doing it, you know? So we're gonna let those dry a little bit. Dry, dry, dry. So I don't have a big following on Twitch, obviously. Um, just starting out here. Most of the following is on YouTube, but uh, wherever you're watching from, appreciate it. Um, got a lot of different programs coming down the pipeline. Uh, crafting videos, unboxings, miniature painting series, um, DM tips, GM tips, and then some actual gameplay, um, including D&D with high school students, season three, and some other games that we're working on here at the studio. So, um, yeah, got a lot going on. But alas, uh, as much as I enjoy the arts, I, I can't change the laws of physics and this paint has to dry. So we're gonna wrap this session up, but we'll be back again and uh, thank you for tuning in. And on the next episode, we'll kick it up into high gear and see how we can finish out these Arctic, Rocky Mountain scattered terrain pieces. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and all that good stuff. Peace. All right. Thanks for watching that video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and don't forget to check out a lot of the other great content that I have on the channel. It's really awesome. You should check it out. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs>